two, three, one, two, three. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the NZ Empire. This is Glimbo again. And I was going through all my old PS2 games, and I was having a look at all on my shelf at the old, at some of the more modern gems that I think have gone unremembered, forgotten. You know, all of the all of the forgottens, basically. That I all the games I really used to love and were a lot of fun that no one ever played and never got much attention and never really, no one really cared about them and just, they sort of faded away. So I thought I'd just do a quick video on the first one that came to my mind. This is Ratchet and Clank Q-Force, or Full Frontal Assault if you're living in the US. The tower defense version of Ratchet and Clank on the PS3. Now the reason I came to this is because I think the multiplayer on this game is one of my favorite multiplayers ever. Such a lot of fun, colourful, cheerful, amazing multiplayer. However, no one played it back then and no one plays it now. Look, we're going into the game things here. None. Hit refresh. Nothing. No games found. No one plays this anymore. And I find that really sad. I would I was actually wanting to do a uh, let's play thing in this, but there's no one online, there's no one around. It's it's dead. And I find that quite sad, so let's post our own custom map. So, with that being in mind, I thought I'd just have a brief talk about it, go through the game, and explain why it's actually a really good game. And why more people, if you see it on the, you know, second-hand shelf for 20 bucks, you should pick it up. And get your friends to pick it up as well. Go with Tarwin. So yeah, this was, I think this is a, oh, actually not too old, is it? Uh, checking the back of the box. Uh, it doesn't tell me. So, I mean, I think this is about a two-year-old game. Which actually isn't that old when you think about it, because games like Arkham Asylum and Modern Warfare 2 are showing their age about now. So, you know, classic games are always brilliant. But yeah, I just wanted to quickly... I know it's I'm actually fighting no one in the map. This video is not going to be very long. But I just wanted to quickly run through it. And show you all the little features that I make think this is a good game. Why I make the, why I believe this is a good game. First off, level designs. Open world level designs. And look, you get rocket boots. I mean come on. What is what cannot be improved with rocket boots? I mean you've got neutral the objective here is you've got to capture all the Well there's three stages. Sorry I should shouldn't I should state the full version. There are three stages. First stage is recon, where you capture these objectives here, choose what weapons you want out of them. Um, the the more nodes you have, the more money you have. And the more money you have, the more you can spend on getting weapons, defenses, uh, player and AI upgrades for your troops. And there's actually a degree of management to it, because you've got to debate whether it's worth spending your money on getting extra attack units or is it worth spending damn I thought I could go through that um, it's worth spending your money on defenses now or troops later so you know little things like that I mean this character skins it look at the look at how colorful it is it's just a somber nice happy positive little game that I think is you know very underappreciated You've got random enemy, um, random enemies just around the map to harass you. You've got you know, defenses, turrets. I think this is a lot of fun game. Uh, we will go with the flame for it. See, and then once you capture the objectives, they um, turn to your side. So we'll run down and capture this one. Uh, use Mr. Zircon and the flame for it. Uh, so yeah. So I think this is a. A really a hidden gem that no one's bothered to play. So, yeah, there are problems with it. I will definitely give this game its problems. The AI is a little bit derpy at times, but then you can expect that from most games. And the weapons are highly, highly unbalanced. For example, there is I'm going to grab it to stop the objective. There's one rocket launcher called the Warmonger, which can instant kill you if there if it gets a perfect direct hit on you and two hit kills you with splash damage so which is really overbalanced and there's the old saying used to go if you get the warmonger you've won the game so there is that problem 
have you grab the lightning device. There is that problem, and look, you can teleport back to your base if you're wounded. It's everything you would want from a classic tower defense game. Uh, we'll go this way. So yeah, what I'd love to see, sorry, I was actually getting distracted by the game again. What I'd love to see happen with this, I'd love to see maybe there being two maps, because there's only actually five available maps at the moment, and over time they do get very predictable and samey, you kind of, you know where all the weapons are, you know where all the item exploits and stuff are, so it does get a bit boring after a while. But what I'd love to see, if Insomniac you're listening, I'd like you to maybe make one or two extra maps for this game, uh, do a patch to patch out the weapons, make them more balanced, and then I think this would be a great game. Try and encourage more people to get into it. Because I've noticed the Ratchet & Clank series has taken a bit of a dive lately, and it's taking a bit of a sleep while they work on that movie, which I believe is slightly unnecessary, but then that's just my opinion on that matter. So, yeah, I'd very much like to like to see more people coming back to this game. A bit of fan base, actually seeing some people when you're trying to go for matchmaking instead of... Oh, I want to do that. Oh no, the turret's not shooting at me. Huh. See, this is the warmonger right here. So yeah, I'd very much love to see if um, people get back into this game and just it picking up. So we will just... Yeah, that's why I really wanted to state, so we'll just let the clock wind out while I run around and kill some AI. Because there's no actual 1v... Like, you can't actually verse the computer in this game. You have to verse a player or else it sets to this mode, which is practice mode. And in practice mode, the um, you don't have any, the enemy doesn't do anything, so all you have is an empty base. So the second the enemy shields go down for the base attack phase, you automatically win, which I always found was a bit disturbing, because, I mean, you could have some fun if you add an AI into this game. But oh well, it's just me. Look, you can see you've got got bases, you have to purchase barriers, you can purchase all, sort of, all different sort of turrets and you can unlock more from your base as you progress. Just rocket boot over. Look, you can upgrade ability, you can add buy abilities to yourself, you can buy abilities for your infantry and vehicles, and you can, over here, you can purchase abilities for your base, so we will purchase another set of barriers. So see? It's a really fun game, and 2v2 is probably my favorite game mode for this, because having two intelligence on, on intelligences on hand means you can have one person attacking or defending, or you can both attack, or you can, you know, make impossible... Uh, we'll, we'll start with a classic military setup and send the grunts in first. Uh, you can have both of you attacking, or you can build an impossible curtain of defensive positions. And you send the big guys in last. So yeah, I think this is a really, really underappreciated classic and I love people to get back into it. Partially because it's an amazing game and I think everyone should play it, and partially because I'd actually love to play it more myself, so kind of a selfish um, factor involved, but you know, I think the sentiment is there. So we will let this, oh yeah, this is the squad day, it's the only time we were actually allowed to build um, forces up. Uh, and it lasts about 40 seconds, then you, um, which you gives you time to build defenses and create what sort of infantry and artillery and stuff like that you want. And then from there you can, there's the base invasion phase, which only ends once either a base has been destroyed or all enemy infantry in your base or approaching your base have been annihilated. So, yeah, we'll get a Mr. Zircon and we will get a flamethrower. Base invasion phase See the shields drop. And normally you'd have defenses and you'd have to fight your way in. And your objective is to destroy all six of these generators. And then once that happens, you win the game. Which is that So yeah. A simple, easy little game type that, while tower defense modes have been kind of neglected and abandoned over the years, that I think definitely worth, is worth a second glance. So if you happen to be in JB Hi-Fi or whatever and you see a copy of this game for 20 bucks, pick it up, because it's definitely worth it. The campaign's nothing to, you know, write home about, but, you know, it's not 
really what you're there for, just as in you're not there for the battle the campaign battlefield. Alright, sure. Let's see, win the game. So yeah, just my thoughts and take on this little gem of a classic, so yeah, thank you very much for watching guys, and I will see you again another time, another place, another life.